and I think that we are live. Hi, everybody. Long time no see. This is Quality Talks interviews back. Last time we had the meetup. Uh, today we will not have any presentations because uh, today I have a very special guest, actually. And um, for me, it's special for several, several reasons, but we will come back to that later. First of all, I would like to say that um, uh, she, and we will have a superwoman today, she, she uh, approached me, so, so it was her initiative, and I'm really thankful for that. Uh, and uh, if somebody would love to also join me on a Quality Talks interviews and, um, I don't know, maybe be interviewed by me or, ha or having a meetup with me, just let me know, write me down on the comments or, I don't know, ping me in LinkedIn, uh, we have all the social medias that you can imagine, so just go for it. I'll be waiting for you. But now, going to our main focus for today, we have Mirella. Hello. Hi, Lina. Hello, everyone. Thank you for this invitation. I'm, I'm very happy to have you here today, here. tonight already. Yeah, yeah. After the work, after yeah. we had the dinner, now we can uh, relax a little bit and discuss some topics that are actually part of our daily life, daily professional life. I actually have several topics uh, for to, to, to question you. Uh, but first of all, I would love you to, to introduce yourself so people would also know who you are. Sure. I am Mirela Blaschke. I am now send you, sending you greetings from uh, Vienna where I'm living and working. I work as a software test engineer in Vienna for an insurance company. I have a background in economics and I have previously worked as consultant in Romania, but uh, I've also had the chance to join different international projects where I could understand and practice uh, quality assurance. As I know, our talk today will be about um, quality assurance and testing software, and uh, I'm eager to know your questions. As well, I would uh, I would ask uh, people um, to send our feedback because I I would um, highly appreciate that. I let you just be on solo while while you're introducing yourself. Thank you. Uh, first of all, you have questions for me. I hope that you don't mind you do, and you're not expecting only questions from the audience. So I have questions for you. And um, first of all, I would like to understand your, your QA career. How did you begin? Because uh, I, the most uh, QAs that I have uh, have known lately, they started from something like completely different. So I would like to know your path. This um, this experience with quality assurance on software testing started four years ago when I joined a consulting company and I was sent to, to work on a project, um, part of the testing team. So uh, this was actually my beginning in this area. Um, it was a difficult experience at the beginning it was, I was not used. Uh, the next step was to take uh, the certification. I, I mean, uh, ISTQB, okay. uh, foundation level. Mm -hmm. And this has helped me a little bit in understanding the theoretical aspects of this, uh, of this role. And um, later on, I, I had the possibility uh, to join um, other teams and to expand my knowledge and my practice. Since then, I, I'm focused in this area and uh, I've done many steps in, in order to, to provide quality results. And you've been doing so far, so like at least from what I know. Yeah, actually, it's uh, it's all the time work in progress. I try to develop myself as professional. I try to expand my knowledge and to be a flexible in order to support the different aspects of uh, quality assurance. 
because um, it's not that simple as it seems. Sorry <laughs> yeah. to say that. Um, I started with uh, with an easy approach, meaning um, I started doing um, black box testing mm -hmm. from to support the business team with some customizations. And for me, the approach it was simple at that at that point. I was supposed to, to send some input data, then to expect out of a process an, uh, an output. And uh, I, was, uh, I was using my, my knowledge in finance and banking at that time, and it was focused on, on this aspect. It was not so technical, it was not, um, it was not based on, on the systems, on, uh, it was not so complex actually. And I thought at that point that I will be focused and I will remain on this area because I succeeded to, um, to have good results and to, to, to have hands on uh, on this. And um, I was thinking that that's for me because I've studied economics. <laughs> uh, so um, it was fitting somehow. It was okay. uh, not, not fully business, not fully technical it was uh, something in the middle yeah and, um, and i i knew how to approach it at that point for this type of testing and um, i had of course good feedback for for the for the project and so yeah. on and i've joined others and uh, uh, with other projects i um, i succeeded to to receive new tasks in new teams with other standards, other practices, and suddenly my testing experience was not relevant. Okay. So um, changing, uh, changing the teams, uh, the countries and everything, it was not, um, it was not the same experience, not the same, uh, I could not apply the, the knowledge because everything was different. But so different that you couldn't use anything from your previous knowledge. Uh, no, because I was I was not working anymore in banking. The project okay. was on insurance. The country was uh, not Germany anymore. Yeah, uh, test management tool was not um, HP anymore, mm -hmm. uh, and they don't they were were not needed uh, any customizations or any end to end for the business processes. They needed something else there be checked okay so um i um i was supposed to reinvent myself and to adapt myself and this is testing testing is about um, how flexible you are in order to to provide the best outcome of course in the context because we are not living in in, uh, in an ideal situation where we have all the information that we need where we have all the feedback that we need and everything is working as planned. Yeah. Uh, all the time testing mm, was under pressure. This is me. <laughs> well, when testing is not under pressure, like, let's be honest. But yeah, I understand. Uh, lately, it's it, uh, the approach is changing because uh, we are now working on agile and it should be uh, incremental. Yeah. But at the beginning, four years ago, Agile was not so, no, not so. Um, yeah, it know. was not that common and, and uh, used, right? As as it is nowadays, gladly. <laughs> Testing was coming uh, at the end when uh, yeah. the, the budget was not that um, um, in, in the favor of, of the project where everyone wanted to deliver where um, the mistakes were really painful because mm -hmm. at the end if you find something at the end uh, it can mess up everything of course and, um, it was not easy but um, from every experience i learned uh, and i learned how to like, mainly how to approach testing more than testing itself yeah um I consider that I needed also some other certifications and uh, I, I started to study because uh, I want to be prepared. Mm -hmm. 
as much as as I can. And um, it was also business uh, certification that I needed. Okay. And, uh, because um, when you test some products, um, you also need to have an updated background. Yeah, but I think that the te testing is mainly about it. It's like you can learn how to test, but when you change the project, you still need that ramp up till you know the business and you understand like how to act within that business, right? Because everything just changes. Of course, you have like the, the, the standards, but the big part of, of the testing logic that you need apply, it changes with the business, right? Yeah. Yeah, right. So you took the also the ISTQB one, the, the business analyst, or was it a different one? Uh, no, no, no. I was uh, I was going into the uh, banking products um, certification. Okay. And later on, uh, in the direction of ECB, because uh, it was needed at that point. Okay. And did you feel that it helped you, like having the certifications? Because I have, to, I think that this is like kind of polemic topic because there are some people that say that um, certifications are great and the other says that it's like just a piece of paper and it actually don't help you on a daily basis. What's your opinion? It depends, uh, of course, on the business need that, that you have, that you, okay. uh, that you meet. But um, in my case, I could say that it, ha it has helped me, but not directly. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, it was not a bad idea, uh, but uh, it was not mainly about my certification. The testing was not, uh, was not with of that. Of course. But uh, I also do consider that if you, if you set up to, um, uh, to an area, business area, you should have the basics. Yeah. No matter if you are doing testing, project management, uh, I don't know, um, you are business analyst or something else. Um, and m I was mainly a business business side at that moment, and mm -hmm. this, this was a basic. Okay, okay. And then after that, um, you, you started to learn... Like at which point on your career did you start to learn more about automation? I've done a lot of business testing. I've mm -hmm. done a lot of end to end for different processes in insurance area and banking areas for different products. Yeah. Of course, with different logics uh, behind. But uh, at the at the end of um, 2020, I considered that I uh, I want to go to the next level. Mm -hmm. Okay. It was also a conclusion um, out of my daily routines at the job and what what is happening as uh, as approach uh, for all uh, testing aspects because um, this uh, area of automation in testing is uh, well known and mostly used since corona yeah well it, it was used also before but w was it kind of then dictated by the needs of the project or you just thought that this is a natural uh, growth for you to to start with automation part i took it organic Okay. I, believe that, uh, I consider that this would be my next level and I didn't want to be under the pressure of the project because my projects are really serious and uh, it's a lot of work there. It's not something like you you step in, you don't like it, you came out and say, sorry guys. Yeah. <laughs> so <Fine> mistake. I'm <laughs> gone. Yeah, it's not for me, sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I could not I could not do this and I didn't want so I, I um, consider that is the better uh, way to, to approach it is to to learn parallel with my with my daily job until I have my confidence and uh, I have my uh, my own experience and why not I can approach my job in another way than I did until that point so yeah. uh, no one will say no if if I can bring something valuable, if I can provide a good outcome, 
and I'm sure that uh, my team is flexible enough and uh, it's not, no one will say no. So I started in 2020 uh, with the first steps uh, in, into this direction and uh, I was thinking how to, how to document this journey actually. Okay. Because, because I was, I was imagining that at a certain point I will forget everything, how I started. Okay. Okay. Because you are growing and growing and growing, growing, and then you do not know how, 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 how was the initial setup, for example. Okay. Yeah. I understand. You have it, you have it since from, I don't know if it's. It, ha it happened actually to Hello. me. Uh, I do remember when I started to uh, like learn. And uh, one of the first things that I was learning also was like a cucumber with the Java. And I did all the setup for myself and I was like really already working with some test cases and learning some, you know, uh, more advanced things. And then I volunteered myself to, um, to give a workshop on the cucumber thing at my company. And then like they started to have problems with the installation. I was like, how did you do that? It's like, I don't remember. I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, I totally feel it. Um, because you need that setup at the beginning and then it's there and you feel it like it's forever since yeah. it was there. So um, you don't pay attention to this. And um, I wanted to, to have clear as a journey because I, I consider that at a certain point I might forward knowledge. And I don't know, I don't want to... To forget the start actually that yeah. was the intention behind so i created a digital agenda okay i mean my website my website is nothing else like than a notebook like a note paper notebook where where i keep my information it's it's not for business uh, i do not uh, have um i don't know um other scope behind mm -hmm. It's just for me, for my own knowledge. And it was useful, actually, because in in a few months, I could I could see the relevance and I, I was supposed to update it. OK, so um, I can I continuously try to keep it updated because I continue to try to improve myself and to to bring updates there for me. Yeah. And if someone else would like to see, to um, take advantage of this, please be my guest. But I saw that you were you you shared on LinkedIn, um, slightly around Christmas or something like that, a little link. But it was not full ready yet, right? So, is, so I do you feel already prepared to share your work like publicly to everybody? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would love sure, to to, sure. to have this the, the link for in the description here, for example, in case people are interested to check your project. I I, I had a, a quick check on it and I thought it was really amazing. So, congratulations first. Thank you. Um, do you hear me? Uh, mm -hmm. I think I had here some bad connection, but I'm back. Mm -hmm. Sorry for that. No problem. So uh, my website is uh, is actually a gathering of my ideas on a digital format, nothing else. But as I said, if someone else would like to use the information, I hope I can improve them because I feel like they are now basics. Um, yeah. And I'm speeding up my learning process and I also would like to, to update the, the website as soon mm -hmm. as I, I give myself time for this. Um, and it's helpful because sometimes it's helpful for, for, for those who want to step into this. Exactly. But can you uh, share then with us like what was your first step to learn? Where did you start? Uh, was it like a specific language, a specific tool, or the the, the basics of automation? What, what was your first step to learn automation? First of all, I didn't know with what to start. <laughs> so uh, 
because you have plenty of, of choices of um, of programming languages. So choosing the one that fits you is not that easy. Okay. And I've done a research on Google or our Bible. <laughs> so I succeeded uh, I succeeded to, to find that Python is easier. Okay. To understand, to use, to program, to code, everything there. It's uh, and it's also powerful. And I said, okay, this is for me. Then I can start in uh, into this direction. And um, I I started with the first uh, with the first step. I've downloaded Python. Of course, like you said, on on uh, Fastlane. And then I started to to look for materials, to find books or tutorials to help me into this. Uh, and I um, I downloaded a book from Amazon, and it was, uh, from my opinion, a good one because it had um, exercises and tips and a lot of explanations. It was plenty of, uh, um, of clarifications there. Yeah, the, the one that you you might need at the beginning until you to understand the differences okay. and uh, I started and um, I remember that um, I was reading a reading a reading online um, book and at the end I said why is not working <laughs> <laughs> okay and actually it was not working because I was learning about Python 2 and I was using Python 3. Oh, yeah. I, I had actually the same issue when I was starting to learn, actually. Yes. So uh, for me, it's funny. It's funny right now to talk about, uh, about this. Uh, but actually, who, who looks um, regarding the, the programming language availability when you start a book called How to Learn Python? Actually, did, uh, I will be very, very honest. This was something that I was all the time really confused. It's like when they write a book, right? It's a, it's, it's a very static thing. So, and things change so fast, right? So yes. you, you have, I, I actually had a book with um, how to uh, do automation testing with Selenium with Python. And yes, I had the same thing. Like this was written now, but this book will not last for long. So what then? And um, yeah, I totally feel that. You know what was the, the first uh, check after this experience? What? Since when we will have Python tree available? <laughs> <laughs> until, until what point we will have this available? Because I was really paying attention to this. And uh, I can I can tell you this for the next ten years if I'm if I'm uh, not wrong. So plenty of time I would say. Okay. So Actually, I when I, I was automated, I I decided to go back to Python uh, 2.7 because it had plenty of things information on there, and the three was kind of new thing. I was like, no, it will take some time till it will be adopted. So I'll just leave it there. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> okay, so now we have officially Python 3. Yeah, yeah. Um, since one year, I think so, or something like this, so or less than one year. Uh, for the next couple of years, that's sure, and uh, that's the base. That's clear, and it's self -o. Um So I started with, uh, with uh, downloading Python, and then installing um, Selenium and then some books. I have one mm -hmm. next to me. Um, Any book to recommend? I would recommend because um, when you start, you want to be easy, right? Yeah. You don't want to learn everything. You don't want to understand everything. You want to just understand the main idea. Exactly. And be accessible for you. And I would recommend um, LinkedIn trainings. Oh, okay. Because uh, I'm using them in the last two, three months, and they are useful. They are short. They are. They are. Uh, they they have a good summary. Mm -hmm. 
and also practice you can practice uh, as well so it's a good start i would say okay it, if you want to have a focus the focus that's the point okay thank you um so yeah i have now this project it's officially live right we can share the link and it's it's basically your journey of learning automation from zero to uh till today right yep I'm still and it's mainly focused on Python, right? Uh, for the moment, yeah. Okay. Uh, I will. I want to keep it flexible, so it will also uh, have uh, improvements from my daily uh, job as general mm -hmm. outcome, not related to okay. project, like um, conclusions or tips or things that um, are connected to the open source tools. Mm -hmm. Cool. And uh, I hope to be useful, uh, but I'm the most uh, interested to, to have it because it's useful for me. Um, and um, after I've tried alone with this setup, with the books, with LinkedIn trainings, with my laptop during the weekends when I was yeah. so tired, I considered that I need help. And... Uh, I'm lucky because um, I'm now working with my mentor mm -hmm. and I would recommend you to, to have someone to guide you into this journey because um, automation is not easy and uh, it's not something that um, can be intuitive. Actually, this topic of mentorship, uh, lately, like in all the books that I've been reading, regardless of the topic, I see this uh, advice that we, we the, like the, the positive effects of having a mentor, right? But in automation or in, in IT at all, uh, this is something not that uh, common, you know? You, you don't see people talking about mentorship in, in IT, like in more in um, original uh, perception that you have, right? When you have somebody that is guiding you through something of course you have these uh, uh team managers or team leads in, at work but this is different you have like a person that is mentoring you right yeah okay uh, i have a person and we are working uh, during our weekends of course when you can when we can synchronize ourselves and it's super useful first of all it's like we are trying to discuss mostly about the problems that I'm that I'm um, I'm having while trying yeah. to automate some steps and uh, I really get the explanations that help me to to forward my my progress okay. otherwise I would have been blocked there at a certain point with all trainings with all knowledge that general specific knowledge that I need yeah. Applying the knowledge is something else. Having the knowledge is one. Applying exactly. is something else. And uh, practice is killing. I uh, I would say like this. So you really need someone who, who has experience, who is senior into this direction to help you, to guide you. Because um, otherwise there is no progress. It's just a try. Yeah. I actually have a mentor, although it's not in, in QA nor in IT, uh, I have been in other aspects of my life, but I do have a mentor and I can see the difference when you are working with somebody. And uh, usually mentors are really good, not only with guiding, but also with having the right questions on the right time, which make, makes you really understand things. So, so when you're trying to answer, then you just all the picture comes together. And I'm really happy that, that I found this mentor that I have. Uh, and I now that I feel the difference on myself, I was like, okay, I wish I, I, I had done this earlier and for other things as well. And so I am kind of a little bit jealous of you so that, that you came to this. And I think it's awesome. Uh, yeah, I'm also grateful for, for this and not all, only for, for him. Um, I'm, I'm receiving help. It's not me yeah. uh, trying alone, uh, even exactly. if I might do so. 
even if I'm during my weekends, but I'm uh, I'm the ideas of the people next to me. I'm the experience of the people next to me. I'm uh, I'm gathering things, putting them down on 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 my plate on on a, on a specific place, and then thinking and trying to deal with them. It's not like yeah. I cannot solve everything. I, I don't want to. I can because of because I'm working. I cannot do both things, uh, st my study and my work. So I have to separate them. But the things that are for my study for extra job, they are really uh, getting importance, and um, I, I try to develop them as as good as I can when I have time and energy for this. Okay, okay. That, that's super cool and I'm really happy for you and I really hope that your project grows. Um, I'll share the, the link for your project also here in the comments and of course like with now that uh, with your growth the project will grow as well so we will get more uh, information which is awesome. But now on a little bit different note and um, I, I, I have been participating or working together with the Portuguese Women in Tech um, and also uh, trying to, to do some mentorship um, to other young professionals, female young professionals, uh, because I think that it's uh, cool to have like more people abro uh, aboard. So a question for you, and uh, it, it might not sound right, and I really uh, I'm sorry if I uh, say something wrong about it, but I, I have the, the best intention is like, did you feel any difference for being a woman uh, when you started your career in IT? Like when, when did you when you did your switch? Sure, um, I will answer to this. And you are you are talking about the reality. Uh, I feel like uh, when I'm when I'm entering a project, a new testing experience. I feel like. I don't get the same credit as my colleagues that they are male. Okay. And um, I cannot do anything against this. I take it as it is. And um, I'm not, this is not anyhow in my focus. How the other will see me, will think about me, my capabilities, my skills in this area. I, I'm more interested about the, about the project, about the, the um, outcome of the project what what yeah. we want to test there what's the focus of testing there and uh, after i give myself time and i study and i'm trying to to understand what's happening there on that process in between those systems uh, mm -hmm. what we do we expect what are the kpis the standards i don't know um, how do we measure the testing quality then i can approach my colleagues when I when I feel I have the right questions, to ask. okay. And all the time at the end of the project, I consider I have the coolest team ever. <laughs> but it takes time. It's it's not from the first time. I I feel like I, um, women do not do not get credit from the first try. I have okay. this feeling. Okay. This is, of course, this is. Uh, discussion a matter of culture of, of team of individuals i don't want to um, give more importance to this than i should because actually yeah. it's not it's not impo it's not so important who is what what's the gender of of me of, of, of course, my colleagues of the most important is how can we work as a team and what can we deliver as a team it's not exactly or them we are not separate, but uh, if you if you can prove that you have the right approach, and that's more important than having exactly the right skills, and you are wi willing to deliver and you are committed, then of course um, the others will will have uh, will will see you in another way. Exactly. Exactly. I was very lucky because I haven't uh, had any issues uh, throughout my career, luckily, uh, for, for the gender things. Uh, I somehow was always, I, I felt always like 
you know, on the same level. But I do understand that these things uh, sometimes they happen, unfortunately, and we still have, you know, the differences in salaries in, as in some countries. So, of course, this is really about, you know, showing the value and, um, and stepping up. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I also really hope that I can contribute to that at some point with the mentorship program. We'll see. Um, but uh, I'm really glad that you are, you know, you are committed to, to also change things on your side. That's awesome. Not only, not only this, I really feel appreciated in my team. Uh, and uh, I really feel like I'm delivering um, quality results. And based on that, it, uh, the project is changing, is improving itself. And uh, we will deliver something better because we are working together for this. It's not about exactly. me. Yeah. It's about the... Uh, of course, it can be about my findings, my uh, conclusion, my approach, because sometimes it's, it's just your own logic and uh, your own um, arguments in order to to show something, to explain something. It's, yeah. uh, it's out, of, uh, uh, out of standards because we are doing sometimes exploratory testing. We are not doing, we are not working all the time with the standards in front of us and then it just going from a to to b it's it's up to you sometimes uh, but i feel appreciated i feel um, i feel part of the team and um, I, I really have a good feedback and i'm i'm happy that's, to share that it's, it's possible that, that's it's, awesome that's awesome and yeah i, I think that uh, it's happening exactly that that's awesome that people really get credit for their value and uh, this at the end of the day this is the most important thing right uh, and uh, yeah, I, I can join you to the to the group of people that have uh, ex an excellent team. So I totally feel that, and I'm really happy that this is your your case. Um, you mentioned here the exploratory testing. Um, when you do exploratory testing, do you use any checklist or is it time boxed? Uh, do you have any tips or rules for the exploratory testing that you do? I uh, I usually for perform exploratory testing. Well, when I receive a new user story that I have to test, and okay. uh, this is my first attempt to, to try to test. Okay. I just, I read the user story. So when you have no test case for that, right? It's something new to you that you are trying to, okay. I see. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, um, I, I effectively, uh, um test the way i think it should not one to one to the user story because mm -hmm. sometimes you can find things that are uh, in correlation and otherwise if you just follow the rules you might miss this yeah and the first attempt is just um let's see what do i get out of a smoke test what do what can I what outcome can I receive from this step from the other? Let's play a little bit with this, and this is okay. for testing at the beginning, like uh, with. No but do you write down your your uh, like steps that you took or something like that? Do you have any documentation from the exploratory testing outcomes, or or is it really to to try things out and then you file out the the bugs that you find and uh, it's then it's over and you proceed to writing the test case. Uh, this is for me a preliminary testing and uh, it's all only for my own overview of the process itself or, or the application itself. And uh, I cannot raise a bug, a defect based on exploratory. I go back to the user story and I try to check everything as it should be step mm -hmm. by step. I create a test case and after I execute the test case, if I find something, then I will uh, raise a defect. Okay. Okay. And you told me also before that you do beta testing. So yeah. um, do you feel any um, benefits of having beta testers also? Uh, or you think that like a larger team of QA inside the company will, will do the job equally? I was uh, I was by choice um, 
uh, involved in this and I really would uh, recommend to someone at the beginning uh, of this uh, Q&A experience to try to test the beta version of the software because there the functionality are not so developed and the, the features as well. So um, it's, uh, it's a sim simpler than, than later on and you can learn a lot. You can um, really have a clear overview of the application. So mm -hmm. they try to keep it basic when, when they... But they, is it like, I mean, is it people from uh, different, with different roles in, within the company or is it uh, real, real customers, like a small bunch of real customers who are the beta testers? Beta, test, beta testers are actually can be the users of the application, but this is not necessary. And the beta test beta software is intended to be released to a small group of people. Exactly, Usually, but I was asking in your in your experience, like you have only inside the company some selected yeah. people. Okay, only inside, it was released okay. only inside the company. Okay, okay. For the employees, and do you see that uh, it's helping to have the better coverage, or is it like helping to have the better understanding of real life uh, questions that people might have or issues, or is it more about usability and and design? All of all of these three, uh, okay. because um, we so really helpful. Then we created um, a feedback. Um, at the end, a feedback page, and the user was supposed to give us feedback. Mm -hmm. So the feedback was also related to the usability, um, was related also to the functionalities, uh, and okay. then uh, if the application was clear enough as scope itself, if the questions were clear enough. So we succeeded to gather a feedback, and based on feedback, we succeeded to improve it. Awesome. So, it's um it's the first step it's like a baby yes but, but it's cool not not that many companies have uh, the beta testing implemented and i i find this really awesome because um it, it's great to have like uh, early insights from people that are not that much involved into the project but i mean of course we have like the the shift left testing and earlier testing and it's awesome and it helps identify a lot of things but at some point you get so used to your platform, so biased to your platform that you cannot tell the difference anymore. Like, you know, sometimes you don't see things like the, the real customer sees. And mm -hmm. it's really it's really useful to have this. And I actually have been in a project that, uh, that had the better testing and it was really, really cool for us. Um, so, yeah. Okay. And uh, another, I have a lot, a lot of polemic questions from my point of view to you today. So another question that I would like to understand is like, what do you think will be the future of testing? So manual or automation? Because when I joined QA, everybody told me that if you don't automate, you will be fired in two to three years. And uh, yeah, I see a lot of people doing uh, manual testing still. So what's your opinion on that? That's a general and challenging question as well. Of course. I told you, <laughs> I told you that it's not a straightforward one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would um, I would answer like this. In the future, I personally consider that manual testers will not be requested, but the manual testing will be. Okay. So this part, uh, manual testing will be part of the future projects and future checks even if it will be maybe combined with automation partially or fully i don't know but um, the job itself the role itself i don't think will survive longer okay okay that's a very nice answer thank you um and then on the other side um I, I know also that you have experience as a speaker uh, and I would like to learn from you. How did you write your first talk? Talk Because I do remember that I had this huge, huge um, dream 
of becoming of becoming you know an international speaker so i would like to learn from you your first experience i am um, i wanted to um, to be a speaker for um, south european testing board and i've applied two years for this first year okay successful, second year successful so first three year you didn't get selected and then only in the second attempt that's still yeah. pretty nice second attempt i mean that's awesome um and uh, i i must admit that uh, i was not um, comfy with this position as speaker it was something very important for me because i was i was thinking about the audience that it's there so they know more than you yeah because, uh, this is a targeted um, audience so you you have to bring something valuable to share and um what can i tell you after this um, this experience that i had in 2020 just try it don't i think agree guys don't, don't agree. think uh, how can you um how can you uh, bring something what can you bring or just just try to be part of these events because um you can you can observe a lot of things you can um, learn you can hear a lot of ideas practices exactly. people it's a more i i would i would take it right now more as networking than as speaking experience okay okay of course I was paying attention to my presentation to deliver something uh, professional and to be interesting for for my audience. It was, I was uh, I was speaking about agile testing mm -hmm. um, and about tools, practices, best um, uh, lesson learned, and so on. Mm -hmm. And I think it was out of the practice. It was not so complex but it was um relevant okay yeah i see i i do agree with you actually you know i was really scared of of uh, speaking uh and but i really wanted it like really hard and at some point i think that i realized so that uh in the audience we will always have people that know more than we do and people that know less than we do. But as long as we talk about our experience, it can't be wrong. You, you right. So if you talk about the, you know, the agile testing in your, the projects that you have been, it's, it, even if it's not scientifically to, uh, right, it's still true. It's still, still it's your path. So it's your lessons learned, it's your outcomes. So, it can be hel uh, helpful uh, to, to somebody. So uh, I think that I started to think like that to, to just, you know, lose this uh, stage fright that I had. Although I, I didn't have a stage fright. I think I had a QA stage fright. But um, yeah, I think that's awesome that, that you started and uh, congratulations. And I, I hope to I meet you in one of, um, one of the conferences soon. And by the way, what are your plans for the future then? In in terms of your career i will um i intend to focus myself on epa testing okay i intend to focus myself on uh, testing scripts that would mm -hmm. help this automation approach um and i'm talking about daily practices uh, at my job yeah yeah and uh of course, I want to I want to expand my knowledge and my practice regarding Python and Selenium for automation. Update okay. the with this progress when it's the yeah, case. Yeah, awesome. And um, would be great, would be great if I could test some testing tools. Okay. Okay. Uh, but do you have anything in your mind for the API testing, for example? Uh, something yeah. that you would like to try yeah i've already um tried something extra. okay what is that um i've uh, tried the 
tool called uh, SOP, SOP um, UI. SOP UI, yeah. And um, I find it complex and it's much more powerful. But I think mm -hmm. that for a beginner, it just, you know, <laughs> just crazy for, for somebody that is just starting at least. I don't know. Yeah. Do you agree with me? <laughs> Uh, in general terms, I find Postman uh, as open source tool much more friendly and looks. Yeah. You can, you can approach it uh, without having a previous experience into this API testing. Um, but uh, there are tools much more powerful. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's a very basic one, but uh, it's you know the, the for the first entry, it's it's good enough. I would say. I tend to agree with you. There are also other aspects of testing that uh, I would like to, to explore. Uh, for example, I was not involved in load testing, performance testing until this point. And okay. I think it would be a good idea and a good approach if I see, if I observe something to just to try, just to give it uh, a try and uh, have a look what's happening there to form mm -hmm. my own opinions. Yes. Um, and to to code more oh that's awesome that's awesome and i i, I can understand that because uh i missed it also a lot and i'm very happy to um, i'm back to it i have the, the the possibility to code more now and i'm like i really miss it so i wish that uh, you your goals become true soon and and uh, yeah and that also this, I, I bet this will help also to the project. I have also mm -hmm. here one question, which is, um, do you feel that companies support people to start learning automation or they just prefer to look for somebody that is well established? Both. Uh, okay. If they are in a hurry for release, they will search for an experienced uh, person to hire a new one. But if there is no pressure into this direction and, and it comes uh, natural uh, and it helps, why not? Um, of course, yes. And it's, um, it's something that everyone wants to have, actually. Yeah, but, you know, some, some projects probably they don't, do not want, you know, to, to have that, give that time to person to learn things, you know, because, I mean, supporting is not hoping that you will learn over the weekend things and you come back to work on Monday and you know how to automate. Supporting is saying, okay, we, you know, you can have like Friday to study this and then we will have probably, I don't know, a developer with you to, to teach you uh, for one day or you can just, you know, shadowing uh, that person so you learn more. Um, so I think that that will would be one example of support, but saying like, okay, on Friday night you go home on Monday morning, I hope that you know how to automate or at least do a hello world. It's like, of, of course they will, will be happy. And uh, I do that and I love doing that, but uh, I, I mean that that part of support. Unfortunately, Corona is not helping us. So um, because we are not sharing the same office it's not that easy to approach someone and to ask for help. Yeah, that's, that's true. The current practice, but it's also up to you. It's also up to if there is uh, no door for you, create one. It was to say. Actually, so, that was the story of quality talks. I I do agree with that. <laughs> with that quote. Yeah. quote. So, is it, we maybe we should not have so big expectations from the other to create the context for us to develop ourselves. If you really want to develop yourself, you'll find the, the people, the choices, the practices to help you. Yeah. Uh, and it's up to you. Don't forget that. Um, I would, I would say, I would say start from somewhere. Don't think how difficult it is. Don't, don't uh, limit yourself. Yeah. Just, step into this and after you you understand it you can take a decision of going forward or not but try it that's an excellent advice i do agree 100 with you it's 
just do it no matter how afraid you are just do it start by doing and eventually you'll feel comfortable uh, i mean all the uncomfortable things that they or one day comfortable they were uncomfortable at some part of, point of our lives until we started to do it and did it regularly so i do agree with you time flight actually it's uh, already one hour of our life wow we are on top of our schedule um i don't know do, do you have anything uh to add to to i don't know maybe an information to share something that you would like to add that wasn't asked today i would say for the people that want to step into this uh, automation area if you'd like to try this area, develop uh, the professional knowledge, uh, I hope that my website is available. Is, uh, support well, I'm sorry, your mic uh, just uh, changed for some reason. Really? Uh, oh, now it's better. Okay. Okay, okay. So I'll okay, you're I'm back. Sorry. Saying, no problem. As I was saying, I hope that um, my website, my digital agenda, to be helpful for those who would like to to enter into this new area of automation and testing uh, and um, of course I can be a support if someone needs a support from my side I, I'm, I will be happy to help because um, I, I'm sure I can spare half an hour out of my uh, time and share some some things that might be a career change for someone that's awesome and uh, i'm all the time thinking what's the the outcome of my work at the end of the day and sharing is caring i really believe that uh, this is the only way of growing you are growing out of actions out of sharing out of a networking community of developing and working together yeah so it's, it's not a single um action of course it can be but it's more helpful if you if you um, um get support and if you offer support yeah i think that's amazing from your side in the first place because uh, uh you know being available for people that that's uh, very very cool uh and also, I do believe that this will help you to learn because I, I feel that uh, the more I try to uh, help others and uh, explain something or teach uh, at some point, yeah, I can. I can't teach a lot of things, but things that I can, I feel that I grow as well. So, so this is helpful for me, and it's also an extra motivation to go extra mile and learn even more, so I can share more. So that's an amazing feeling. I think that both from from the one who gives also to the one who, who takes. And um, I, I really love this attitude from you that, you know, you are so available to share your experience. Um, yeah, so th that, that would be awesome. Uh, please share the link with me so I can share this here in the descriptions of this video so people take profit of it. Right away. Cool. That's awesome. It's a simple... Uh... Online. So you're writing it here on the chat? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, awesome. Great. My my agenda, my digital agenda is called www.beonline.at. Uh, Ate from Austria. Okay. Uh, Be online from Blaschke online. I'm okay. online. Okay. Oh, that's that's pretty. There, there is nothing awesome. else that I'm online. Nothing else. <laughs> okay. Okay. Great. Then, yeah, I will also include this uh, on the description of the video just in case. Uh, and I'm sharing this also here. And, um, yeah, I mean, uh, time flies. And uh, thank you for this amazing conversation. Thank you also for letting us know a little bit more about you. I think that it's awesome that you uh, decided to share with us your career and, you know, your growth throughout this time and especially you know the, your first steps to automation and now your digital agenda and things like that i think that this is a, a really cool project and a really 
hope that uh, you know it crosses the world and everybody learns about it this is awesome i'm eager to see you on a, on a, um I, uh, on a conference it, it has been such a long time since i was able to go to a conference that i even forgot to, to, how how is it called in a conference i miss that I, actually this was one of the things that i missed the most from the previous life is being able to do this networking with people from my area so i really hope to 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 meet you soon uh in one point i also feel free to come to portugal and visit us at uh, quality talks I hope that one day we will go back to offline as we used to be. Um, thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for everybody who watched us, who will watch us, who is watching us now. I don't know. Uh, this time, uh, this video will be online available on YouTube. So feel free just to scroll and check, double check the questions. Um, and let us also suggestions, comments. Uh, and even if you have any questions, after this video also leave it in the comments so we can approach them Manila and ask them afterwards thank you thank you lina thank you to all